Inspire's been and gone. I've got loads to talk about. I'm never doing this in five minutes. So here we are. Apologies in advance. This is going to be pretty PowerPoint heavy, but I'll do my best to to make it interesting. Double apologies because I'm going to be in shot for the whole thing. So four things that we want to look at today. We want to look at Bing Chat Enterprise, which has just been released. Loop, which hasn't just been released, but I've only just discovered it. So I thought it might be of interest. Edge Workplaces, which was also announced very recently. And Microsoft 365 Backup, which was announced as part of Inspire. So we want to start with Bing Chat Enterprise. As you can see from this graph, generative AI technology is here and it's already huge. Its ability to kind of take over the market in such a short space of time is is unprecedented as we see in this graph. And Bing Chat Enterprise represents kind of, I guess, the first phase towards Microsoft's total world domination. It's completely free if you've got an M365 license and it essentially utilizes what already exists now within Bing Chat, but brings it to an enterprise level. What does that mean? It means that Microsoft won't share your data with other people. So whatever searches you put in here won't be used to make the AI better and won't be accessible to anybody else. Indeed, once you close down the page that you're using, any chat, any conversation that you've had with the AI will go. Why use this? Well, this is uh, ChatGPT in another form. And as a result of that, it's going to allow you a lot of power to utilize kind of in your day to day when it comes to making things easier. So you can use this functionality to write emails for you, to write prose, to write documents, to write a blog, tell it what you want and it will do it. One of the things that I find particularly useful with this is you can put in an email that you've got from somebody, copy and paste it and say, how would, how would I reply to this? And it will give you a response. So really, really useful, lovely piece of kit. It's available now uh, on preview. Just, um, just get signed up. And if you want to kind of understand how this differs from Copilot, well, there you go. Uh, in a nutshell, without having to read all of this, Copilot will have access to your data in a, in a fuller sense. So it's going to have access to, to files and meetings and whatnot and be able to create insight off the back of that. And it's going to be accessible within 365 apps. Bing Chat Enterprise isn't that. It's very much kind of a more of a search engine as much as anything else rather than pure content creation like Copilot will be when it finally gets released. Loop. So Loop is really difficult to describe in a minute, but I'll do my best. So Loop components have been around for a while. These are things that you can create in emails, in Teams uh, that are interactive and stay interactive. So what I can do is I can create a little Loop table in a Teams chat. I could then share that on email. I could insert it into a file and that Loop component, as they call it, will stay live. So if anyone edits it in any of those places that I've shared it, it will change for everybody. So it's like a a kind of a, a snapshot of a, of a bigger file, if you like. It's something where you can kind of drag a, a specific thing out and share it amongst people. And as they edit it, it edits it for everybody. Now, what they've done with Loop the app, which is now in preview, it came out at the end of March, is they're bringing all these kind of Loop components together into a workplace. So if you're working on a project, you can utilize loop components in one place. So it's kind of like an interactive whiteboard, which exists. It's like a shared uh, work area, which exists through the likes of Teams, but but different because what I can do is I can create task lists, I can create tables, I can link to files, all that sort of stuff within this. But if I then want to drag a particular component out to share with someone who's not a part of that workspace, I can do without having to share the entire thing with them or add them into a team or whatever else. And what it allows for, I think, is with within projects that are relatively un, unstructured or where Teams just doesn't quite fit the bill with regards to the type of content creation that you want to create, Loop could be a really good alternative. I'll definitely cover this in more detail in a longer video because I feel I've just talked for two minutes and not really explained a heck of a lot. Edge workspaces. Um, again, Brand new, this has been released on, on preview as well. You can only access it if you're accessing Edge through a corporate account. And what Edge Workplace is gonna allow you to do is create shared workspaces within Edge. 
Um, what does that mean? Well, it means I can have multiple tabs open and I can share those with a team and everybody sees it and can interact with it. And as they interact with it, it changes for everybody. Why on earth would I want to do this? Well, if I'm working in the cloud a lot and I'm working in various cloud files across a project, I can create a workspace linking to all those various projects. Wherever those files came from, I can link to those files within my workspace and my entire team can access them really easily. So instead of having to go kind of searching for, for URLs, for SharePoint links that I might have been sent uh, months ago, I can have these in a workspace for my project and everyone can interact with them. So really useful, especially if you're the sort of business that tends to do a lot of their work online and editing documents and whatnot online as opposed to in the, um, in the desktop apps. Again, something I'd definitely be keen to cover in more detail in, a, um, in another video. And finally, Microsoft 365 backup. Well, this just kind of is what it says on the tin. Microsoft are finally entering uh, the, the backup space. Loads of third-party vendors do this already, and I imagine they're already um, panicking a little bit around what this is going to look like. Basically, Microsoft are going to offer the ability for people to back up OneDrive, Exchange, and SharePoint directly within the tenant. Microsoft say, as a result of that, it's going to be a lot quicker. I, I would guess it will be because it's not having to travel anywhere to get backed up, but that is all they've released. There's no detail with regards to kind of what pricing is going to look like or any of that. But again, it's an interesting move from Microsoft. They've obviously moved into a lot of kind of spaces recently that third party vendors used to traditionally um, have like AV and spam and whatnot and backup seems to be the latest one. So we'll, we'll look on with interest to see how this develops. And that is me done. I was right. I didn't do it in five minutes, but I hope it was useful. As I mentioned, I'm keen to kind of cover these areas that I've talked about today in way more detail in separate videos. But the purpose of this was really just to highlight them and, and make you aware that they exist. So absolutely go away, um, search for these things, see what you think of them, and I'll make sure to cover them in future videos in, in more detail. As ever, if you like these videos, please like and subscribe and all the rest of it. And um, feel free to get in contact with myself or Intech if you want any services within the Microsoft Modern Workplace uh, arena. Thanks a lot.